Imagine building an empire for yourself only to turn around and have no one there to share it with. What's going on? You're listening to episode 48 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is about encouraging you to carve out time to build something for yourself. This is for the people who want to pursue their creativity, but they struggle starting or sticking with it. I'm going to be upfront. Today's episode shares a very transparent look into what I've been dealing with behind the scenes of my personal life intertwined with my business. And honestly, this is like creative therapy, almost like audio journaling for me to share this side of things as I never want you to think that I'm living this highlight life like everything's perfect all the time. I'm hoping that maybe it'll help you be more intentionally focused on the things that truly matter outside of creating for yourself. You can find the show notes to this episode in a blog format filled with all kinds of pretty pictures at perspective-collective.com slash 48. And if you find this show could be helpful to others, please give it a share on social media. It's because of people like you that the show is reaching people who need it most. I feel I'm pretty in touch with my audience sometimes. As I mentioned in the intro, I know the majority of my listeners and readers are trying to figure out where to start or how to continue pursuing their creative work. The reoccurring pattern from my newsletter shows people like you want to know how to make time to focus on something outside of your daily commitments. Well, today I was going to write about the power of focusing on a project that you both enjoy and are relatively good at. I wanted to write about how to get started with experimenting and catching a pulse to see if it was the right direction to pursue. However, this ended up turning into me possibly oversharing how my split focus has guided me to the current roadblock I found myself at. Yes, I'm going to share the benefits of what focus can do for your creative pursuits, but I am definitely no expert. I feel I can best share how split focus and doing too much can negatively impact your life as well, which leads me to talking about Superman syndrome. I'll admit it. I am a wizard at piling shit high on my plate, and every time I say that, I can't help but imagine a poop emoji on some type of plate, so it kind of cracks me up, but anyway, piling shit high on my plate, it's always been a blessing and more recently a curse in my life. I've had this Superman syndrome mentality that I could do it all dating way back to high school. It started with a car accident my sophomore year, resulting in me having to get a job at the age of 15, and... I, I backed into someone's car. To my defense, it was a blizzard, and I was in a packed West High School parking lot, and yeah, I thought I was backing up, and I thought I hit a snowbank, but no, I, I just hit another car. I couldn't see anything, and I was young and dumb and didn't know how to drive, but from there, I held down that job of pushing in carts at hy V while attending after-school programs and playing multiple sports. I was excelling in school. I was standing out in sports getting all types of awards, all while making some side cheddar. You know, being at that age, having some money, you know, you feel good about yourself. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, what couldn't I accomplish in a day? You know, what can I do? This mentality carried throughout college. My crazy ass was holding down my job still at hy V. I I was working an internship on the side. I was playing and then coaching football, which is like a seven day a week job, while having an overloaded course schedule with night classes as well. So I was at a private school, Warper College, and with how much this private school was charging per semester, graduating in four years was my only option. So in my mind, I'm like, bring on the challenge along with the premature gray hairs. I can handle it. Doing all the things and succeeding in them was my definition of success. I caught hits of dopamine chasing that productivity high, and I wanted people to know how busy I was. I was the king of focus, split focus that is, and it was a blessing in the beginning. All right, here's where I want to tell you the value of finding one thing to focus on that you not only enjoy, but you're good at too. 
And I need to make a quick note. I can't recommend the book Essentialism enough. If you want to learn more again, that's in the show notes at perspective-collective.com slash 48. Yet somewhere in there, I would be full of shit as I'm horrible at focusing on only one thing as I've wired myself to think that I could do it all. Even after reading this book, Essentialism a million times. When it boils down to it, yes, it's extremely important to have something to work towards each day. Giving your attention to something you both enjoy and are good at can radically impact your life and others in a positive way. The thing I pour my soul into each day is Perspective Collective. Duh. It started as a small side project back in April 2014 for me to create our under as i talk about in episode 28 make your name mean something over the years it began to take on a mind of its own it since opened up new paths of opportunities such as blogging speaking teaching freelancing and currently podcasting having something to focus on used to be an issue in the past for me it would have me feeling lost and depressed in my lackluster day-to-day routine you know life was boring and meaningless But ever since, that lack of focus has insanely blossomed into an issue of split focus and spreading myself too thin. And when I say spreading myself too thin, imagine the smallest slice of butter that you're trying to cover this massive piece of bread with. And that's me. It's just there's not enough, not enough butter for the bread. And there's not enough time in the day for me to do all the things. There are so many things I like to do and want to accomplish, but there's never enough time to pursue them all equally outside the day job. And I'm sure you've said this to yourself a million times. So cue the dreaded elimination game, or as Stephen King says, kill your darlings. Here's a breakdown of everything I do under Perspective Collective in case you were wondering. But again, I'm kind of doing this for me to just get it out there and, you know, put it all out there and try to figure things out. So I want to be as transparent as possible so you can see how I struggle to find the essential things to focus on while eliminating the non-essential things. So first off, the podcast takes up about 50 percent of my time outside the day job. Second, I devote probably 20% of my time to freelance, personal work, (laughs) I'm getting granular here, 12.5% of my time, speaking has been taking up about another 12.5% of my time, and then teaching, such as like workshops or something, that's about 5%. You have no idea how badly I want to get back to podcasting weekly. Like seriously, that's my main goal is trying to get to that point by the end of this year. I feel if I was... 90% of the time all in on the podcast, I could significantly grow it at a faster pace. Yet going all in on the podcast has consequences of its own that I don't know if I'm ready for those yet. With freelancing, while my day job covers the basic costs of my day-to-day living, taking on freelance with the right hell yes projects is too hard to pass on. I have an absurd amount of student loans and other debt looming over me. Making time for freelance slowly works me towards some type of future financial freedom or even feeling of confidence of bringing a kid into this world, you know, like that's important to me. On to personal work, you know, that's what keeps me sane and allows me to find myself in my work and experiment. Sadly, there just isn't a whole lot of time for it lately. Speaking. I love speaking. Like that's one of my favorite things to do and it gives me the largest platform to share my ideas and connect with people like you. It means so much to me. However, the amount of time I invest in planning, preparation, practice, and traveling takes a lot of time away from other things. Finally, with teaching. You know, I, I'm really getting into it more. I've taught workshops on public speaking. I'm teaching my first workshop next month on introduction to hand lettering, kind of a lunch and learn thing. And teaching allows me to discover things I like to help people learn. And it also gives me an opportunity to possibly monetize something and create an additional revenue stream. So I I like teaching too. I realize I'm doing way too much. And for example, one of the darlings I had to kill recently was my weekly Fresh Slice Friday pizza drawings on my pizza drawings only account. That's pretty much why I haven't been talking about it or posting on that account for a while. It was just taking too much time. You know, and this was all personal work. 
And, you know, it was just taking me away from the podcast, freelance, and time that I could have been spending with my wife. So, killing my darlings is hard as hell. But as the book Essentialism says, focus on the essential tasks most. You know, those are what matter. And this is something I battle against daily as I want to do it all. I want to talk about catching a pulse really quick. So I'm only 29 years old and I need to remind myself that it's okay to not have it all figured out yet. Everything I'm doing is one massive experiment every day and trying to find ways to elevate Perspective Collective to my full-time job. And damn it, I'm going to make that happen someday. I got to give myself a break and I want you to remind yourself too that progress is progress. If my experiments with teaching aren't catching the right pulse, then that's the thing that's going to be on the chopping block next to narrow my focus and free up time. Right now, I don't know, so I'm going to continue to dip my toes and test out the water with things like teaching. I share this with you so you can see the various levels of focus that you could have and the opposing side of focusing on doing way too much. So while me... Venting about split focus may seem like a very basic issue, you know, it's not a big deal. Honestly, it goes a lot deeper and does a lot more damage behind the scenes than I think you'd have an idea on. So let's peel another layer of the onion and get real. And this is probably the oversharing section. So I hope you don't mind. Funny story, I started the new year off with the motto, do less but better. I even wrote that shit large on a whiteboard as a daily reminder for me to see each day. That whiteboard was then stashed in my closet four months into my new year goal. Oops. While I've become increasingly aware of my superhero syndrome, changing and acting on it is another story. It's safe to say I'm borderline obsessed with Perspective Collective. Like, I'll totally admit it. I am obsessed with my dream. And I'm obsessed with the multiple channels of what I can create under it. I want to do all the things. I tell myself that I got a late start in discovering what I was capable of. So now that I've caught a glimpse of what I can do, I need to double down on my hustle, in parentheses, to catch up. And there's that fucking buzzword, hustle. That word is trouble, I'm telling you. I was blinded by the hustle and the progress and possibilities of Perspective Collective. It caused me to lose sight of the bigger picture of what was at stake. And I've learned the hard way that I was neglecting and damaging relationships with people that mean the most to me, like Emily, my family, and close friends. There grew an absence of date nights over the last couple years, and there grew an absence of being physically, mentally, and emotionally present with my wife. My family began to expect me to not show up to functions anymore because Scotty's busy. The phone calls and the invites to parties and gatherings with my friends slowly disappeared. And here I am trying to convince myself and Emily that I'm hustling my ass off now in the present so we don't have to work so hard in the future. But who am I kidding? This was all total bullshit. In reality, this was an excuse for me to disconnect from the real world and work on making my dream job a full-time reality. Because one, it's fun. Two, it doesn't feel like work. And three, I'll be completely honest, people shower me in affirmations sometimes when I share my work, and I've never had that shit before in my life. So yeah, it feels awesome. It does. Why wouldn't I want more? And I feel like I'd be crazy to not invest all my time in pursuing this right like that'd be dumb but this superman syndrome has created a trap and i've been trying to claw my way out of a hole i've dug for myself especially the last six months to a year all right this is about refocusing on what matters progress started by admitting to myself then owning up to it with multiple long conversations with my wife In the past, she wanted to be supportive and she didn't want to be the person to tear me away or hold me back from my dream. But hearing her side of things really put things in perspective of how selfish I've been. I've been a very selfish person as 
of the last couple of years. You know, I like to give, I like to help a lot of people, but at the same time, there's selfish intentions behind it, I think, as well. And with my hectic travel schedule lately, we've been making more intentional date nights and uninterrupted time together. Emily's been amazing and insanely, insanely forgiving. And I owe her everything for that. I don't want to be the guy who's gone all the time, traveling, but also gone mentally, physically, and emotionally from a relationship. I don't want to be that person. She doesn't deserve that. I've since been attending every family function possible to reconnect with everyone. That means even all the nieces and nephew birthdays, no matter how many hours away they are on a weekend. Editing the podcast can come at another time. I've also started reconnecting with my local circle of friends who I hadn't seen in months, making time for football on Sundays, drinks, dinners, and low-key hanging sessions has been great. While some friendships are gone, the ones that matter are still around, and I'm grateful for that. I still have a really hard time accepting that I can't do it all because if I have open time, it takes everything in me to not schedule something to fill it. I share all of this because I want you to find something to focus on that lights you up, like Perspective Collective lights me up. However, I want you to see that there's got to be a balance as tunnel vision on a dream can do damage. You can't do it all. Trying to do so comes at the expense of neglecting other things in your life. And as I leave you here, I want you to imagine building an empire for yourself only to turn around and have no one there to share it with. That's the shit that scares me and what I try to keep top of mind each day. All right, I told you I probably overshare a little too much, but again, this show is creative therapy for me. It is turning into an audio journal. It helps me get through a lot of the things that I struggle with that are hard to talk about. And, you know, hopefully it's helping you kind of work through some of the things that you deal with as well. I'm never going to hold back on this show. I'm always going to be completely 100% transparent and honest and vulnerable, I guess, even though it scares the shit out of me to hit publish on something like this, like this will scare me. Yeah, it's tough to talk about. Switching things up, do you want to get a shout out in each episode or get critiques on your work or get access to small punchy episodes or discounts in my shop? If so, these are just a few of the things you can access by supporting the show over at patreon.com slash perspective podcast with as little as $1, $3, $5 per episode. Your support helps the show grow and evolve as it also allows me to keep up with reoccurring costs like audio hosting, web hosting, recorded programs, equipment, etc. Every little pledge helps offset those so I can devote my time outside the day job to bringing you the best show possible. Again, you can invest in the growth of this show by visiting patreon.com slash perspective podcast. Another way to support the show is by leaving a quick ratings and review over on iTunes. And not only helps the show get discovered, but it gives me an opportunity to give you a nice little thank you like this week's plug. And this one is by Grizzly Wheeler, the amazing Josh who, man, this dude can get you the dopest patches and pens. Like you got to check him out, Grizzly Wheeler. But Josh states, Scotty is the real deal and the world always needs more realness mixed with optimism. Short and sweet. Thank you, Josh. You are an amazing soul. And I appreciate this is the dude who did my pizza pens, by the way. So big shout out to Josh. Finally, I always need to give a huge shout out to my homie Bluka. That's Nick Jenkins. That dude just kicks out some amazing work, amazing music, and he's grinding on his dream right now. And it's he makes the show so much better. So you can find Nick Jenkins over at soundcloud.com slash Bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H. I need to give one final thank you to Brandon Busby for helping me edit this show. You did an amazing job, dude. And as you finish out your week right now, I want to keep encouraging you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.